But of course we begin with the Amazon tax. The days of being able to buy a pair of shoes or a book from overseas websites free of GST will come to an end in 18 months time. The government announced today overseas websites will have to collect GST on purchases worth, worth less than $400 from October next year. It says that will level the playing field for New Zealand retailers, despite admitting it will be difficult to police it. Laura Dooney reports. Shoppers on Wellington streets are less than impressed. They'll be paying more for their online purchases from foreign firms soon. I don't think it's a good idea. I think if we had the ability to buy more of those bits and pieces physically in New Zealand, there wouldn't be any need to go overseas and order them. So I don't think it's fair that you're sort of spending extra on purchases that you're buying online. I think it will really affect people's shopping in the sense that they will probably limit what they buy on online, which I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or not. I'm not very happy about it at all. I get a lot of collectibles from overseas, which are usually under the $400 threshold. And it's a lot of things that you can't buy here in New Zealand, penalising you because you can't buy something here and you have to get it overseas by putting a tax on it is extremely unfair. And some local retailers aren't convinced adding GST will help them. Good as Gold is a boutique clothing store in central Wellington that stocks smaller independent brands, as well as some of the globe's biggest labels. Owner Reuben Bryant says today's announcement is long overdue, but under the government's proposal, offshore retailers selling less than $60,000 worth of goods to New Zealand a year won't be required to register and collect GST. So any boutique like me and anywhere else in the world selling to New Zealand, which they all are and every single brand in the entire world has an online store now, they're not sending 60 grand to New Zealand next year. We're only talking about Urban Outfitters, Iconic in Australia, Surf Stitch, Culture Kings, the big online stores overseas. They're the ones who are going to pay GST, which is great, it's fantastic that this has happened, but it's not a level playing field at all. Just down the road at Unity Books, co-owner Tilly Lloyd is delighted with the news. She says large companies like Amazon and its book depository subsidiary are dominating online sales for ordinary customers. Who think, God, I'd really love that book, but I don't think I can afford 60 bucks. I really, really want it for 30 bucks from Amazon's de book depository. You can do that, you just now have to pay the GST, that's all. It's only fair. Tilly Lloyd says customers who shop locally are being penalised for their support by having to pay GST when others don't. And the Revenue Minister Stuart Nash says making overseas retailers collect GST will make things fairer. At the moment there's 26,000 retailers in this country employing about 62,000 people who have an immediate disadvantage because they have got to charge 15% GST whereas if you buy it offshore you don't have to pay that 15% GST. Stuart Nash says suppliers will register voluntarily to collect GST and those that are credible retailers, about 75%, will comply. That's expected to raise about $53 million in revenue in the first year. However, Mr Nash admits it will be hard to police. If you don't comply, then in essence you're committing tax avoidance or tax evasion, but it is, you know, it's reasonably hard to police that, but there will be penalties for it. For Checkpoint, Laura Dooney. Thanks, Laura. Uh, Stuart Nash there saying $53 million in revenue. He's saying that's not the main thing, of course, but it will raise that amount. We'll speak to PwC tax expert Jeff Nightingale a bit later on, just after 6 o'clock tonight.